What's going on everybody, Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another OBS tutorial for you. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the best recording settings if you're trying to use your new Ryzen 9 5000 processor. So let's go ahead and roll that intro. So we're in the new OBS 27, which was released just on June 1st of 2021. This new version of OBS is better in a lot of different ways than version 26, but there are plenty of videos comparing those two out already, so I won't be wasting your time with that. Today, we're gonna be talking about the best recording settings we can get using your processor. So let's go over to settings. On the left-hand side, we see all of our standard options right here. We're gonna choose video. The video settings are important because it all changes depending on what type of game you're playing, on what monitor you're using, on what refresh rate you have, things like that. Some people game on 2K and 4K monitors, but the golden rule I like to use when streaming or recording is use 1080p. And that means scale it down to 1080p if you're using a higher resolution. So I usually game in 2K, so for my base canvas resolution, I would change that to 2K. But when I'm recording or streaming, I want to downscale that to 1080p or 720p. Downscaling makes it easier for people viewing your stream or recording to watch it, and it also makes it easier in your computer to make that stream or recording. If you have a really good PC with a big monitor and you want people to easily watch it, make your base canvas your monitor's resolution and your output scaled 1080p, 1920 by 1080. If you have a lower end computer, you want to probably change your base canvas to 1080p, game in 1080p, and then downscale it to 720p. That'll make it a lot easier on lower end PCs. Now, if you are downscaling, we'll see downscale filters right here, and then we have four options. The top one is bilinear, then we got area, then we got bicubic, then we got langsos. Bilinear is the fastest output. It's easier on lower end computers, but it is not super, super accurate, and it gets a little bit blurry every once in a while. That's for lower end PCs. Then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have langsos, which is a really good sharpened downscale, and that is pretty intensive on the computer, so you have to have a good computer to choose this option, or you'll get dropped frames and things like that. So if you have a pretty average computer, you can choose area or bicubic, it doesn't really matter on that one. So I'm just gonna choose area. And then we have common FPS value. Now typically, you're playing a game in about 60 frames per second if you have a 60 hertz monitor. The end user watching your stream is never gonna see it in that high of a frame rate, ever. You wanna use 60, that's gonna look great. So for good PCs, I recommend 60. If you're dropping frames and your PC is struggling a little bit, you can drop it down to 48 to get a still real nice look. But for weaker end PCs, you want to drop that down to 30, which is half a 60, which is the standard refresh monitor rate of the average person who has a computer monitor. So that being said, if you have a good computer, choose 60. If you have a medium-ish computer and you're dropping frames, choose 48. If you have a low-end computer, choose 30. So we're just going to choose 30 and hit apply. And now we're gonna go over to the output tab on the left. And then we'll see four tabs at the top here, streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. So we're gonna go over to the recording tab since this is a recording tutorial. And then we're choosing the best options for an X264 processor. First for the type, we're gonna keep that at standard. Then the recording path, we're just gonna choose it where we want our video outputs to go when we're recording. You can generate a file name without space if you don't want any spaces in your file names. This is pretty good for like Linux and things like that. Recording format, if we choose this, we have a few options. The most common one people like to use is MP4 and I personally used MP4 for the longest time, but I've since switched to MKV. Now the reason I did that is because if you're recording in MKV and your computer just shuts down for some sort of power outage or whatever, that video is still gonna be saved right to the point where it's shut down. It's not gonna get corrupt like it would if you're using any other of those file formats. But there is a little trick we're gonna go over in the advanced settings because I'm choosing MKV, but I'll go over that at the end of this. Audio track, you're gonna tell it how many audio tracks you want in this recording. Typically, you're gonna be choosing one. Unless you have multiple sources of audio input, then you can choose two or three or four and differentiate them in the audio settings in the mixer. For the encoder, we drop that down. We have a few options. Use stream encoder, which is basically if you got the streaming settings set up, it's gonna basically mimic that. And then if you have an NVIDIA card, you're gonna see an NVIDIA encoder here. If you have an AMD graphics card, you're gonna see an AMD encoder here. And then under we have X264, which is your processor. Now the reason you wanna choose your processor is if you have a pretty old graphics card and you have a really good new processor, 
you'd benefit more by using your processor than you would for the old graphics cards encoder. So since I got a 5900X, I'm gonna choose X264 because it's a fantastic processor. We're gonna keep rescale output unchecked because we already have all of that scaling in the video tab here. Custom muxer settings, you can benefit from using custom muxer settings, but they're kind of proprietary depending on what you want out of this video output. I personally am just gonna leave them blank because we're just doing a simple recording right here. Rate control, we drop this down, we have few options, CBR, ABR, VBR, and CRF. These top three are pretty similar in their own aspect, but then this bottom one, CRF, which is a constant rate factor, is different than the rest because these all base your recording off of a custom bit rate you're telling it, but CRF bases your recording off of a quality scale from zero to 52 or something like that. It's a really close number to that. Basically, the lower number you go on this CRF quality scale, the higher quality and bit rate your video is gonna be, also the bigger file size it's gonna be. The higher you go on that number and that scale, the lower your quality is gonna be, the lower your file size is gonna be. So a really good golden number I like to use when recording for CRF is 15. Anything lower than that, I really don't see the quality difference, but I definitely see the file size difference. And that's something you wanna avoid, especially if you're not seeing anything in the quality. The lowest number I'd want to go if I'm doing kind of like making my own proxy or something like that is 25. You're going to notice a little bit of quality degradation, but your file size is going to be extremely small. So anywhere between 15 and 25 is a great number. If you want awesome quality, if you have a decent computer, then choose 15. If you have an okay computer or even maybe a low end computer, then you could choose 20 and you'll still have a fantastic recording. Keyframe interval, you can keep this zero and that's gonna automatically choose between one and two. One means you have a lot of action going on, constant changing pixels and frames. And two means you have a lot of static stuff going on. Like if you're recording a game of chess, you know, a lot of that scene's not moving. If you have a decent computer or a high-end computer, you can change this to one. If you have a low-end computer, then you wanna change that to maybe two. CPU usage, we can drop that down. We have some options here. Basically, this is saying how fast your encoder is going to run. And usually, the faster you have it up here, the worse quality you're going to produce, but it's going to be easier on your computer to produce the encoded recording. So if you have a weaker CPU, like a really old you know, Intel i4 or something like that, you want to keep this at ultra fast or super fast or very fast, one of these three. You may notice some quality degradation if you use these options up here, but that's what you're trading off. If you have a really good processor, then you wanna move down here to choose maybe slow or medium. Now, personally, I never go below slow. You can't really notice the quality difference, but you can definitely notice the time it takes to render and any kind of heaviness on your processor. So you may notice drop frames due to encoding lag because you have such an intense task you're tasking your processor with. So I personally like to keep mine right around slow or medium. Since I have a 5900X, I'm gonna keep it on slow because I know this processor can handle it. It's an amazing processor. Profile, we have a few options down here. You never really have to worry about baseline. And then these two, main and high, they're actually really similar. You won't notice too much of a difference personally. But the golden rule I like to look at is use main if you're gonna be watching this video on a cell phone. Use high if you're gonna be watching this video on a computer. So I personally like to keep mine on high. Tune, you don't gotta worry about any of these things right here. And then X264 options, you can put some custom code in here if you wanted, but that could benefit you and also could hurt you because it's gonna break OBS's chain of encoding that way. You can Google those custom settings if you want, but I'm personally gonna leave this one blank because these settings right here, after I'm done, I hit apply, they are fantastic. Now for that last thing, since I'm choosing MKV as my recording format, I'm gonna go over to advanced, and then over here under the recording option, there's a checkbox that says automatically remux to MP4, which means that once I'm done recording, my MKV is automatically gonna be converted into an MP4, and then I'll end up with both files. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because MKVs are highly incompatible with a lot of video editing softwares and media players. So if I wanna record something to edit it like this tutorial right now, I wanna make sure to change it to an MP4. And since OBS does it automatically with no quality loss, this is an amazing option that you need to have checked. And then I'll drag that MP4 into my editor, and then it's great, everything's fantastic. So you wanna make sure you check this box, automatically remix to MP4. Once you're done with that, hit apply, and then go ahead and record and see how it looks. And there you have it. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there, because that'll really help me out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And I wanna give a special shout out to all my legendary scrappers at the top, LMC and Hardy Cash. You can find links to their channels and social media in the description below. And thanks to all my super scrappers there in the middle and my awesome scrappers at the bottom.